Hey, you've tuned into I Work For Him, the mouthpiece for the faith and work movement. We're your host, Jim and Martha Brangenberg. Thank you for joining us. We're excited to be talking about today, I Work For Him, the book, and being able to share at one of our authors with you. And you know, it's really important to recommend, recommend, how about recognize that we've got three books coming out this year, I Work For Him, She Works For Him, and I Retire For Him, all accessible and available to be purchased at iworkforhim.com forward slash bookstore. These are not books we're trying to sell so we can make a billion dollars, although that would be really nice. These are books to equip you and your neighbors and friends and coworkers to be encouraged on how to connect your faith and your work. Well, chapter 28 within I Work For Him was written by Work Matters. Workmatters.org. You've heard us talk about Work Matters and the Work Matters Conference many, many, many times on I Work For Him. We're super excited about it. We've got the President, CEO, the executive director, the man, the big kahuna for Work Matters with us here on I Work For Him today, David Roth. David Roth, welcome back to I Work For Him. Hey, Jim and Martha. It's always a good day when we get to talk. So thanks for having me. So Jim might have given you a few titles you didn't know you had, but <laughs> we're, we're just really thrilled to be able to highlight what God is doing at Work Matters through the work that you've been doing, David. So before, as we get started, why don't you just get us up to date a little bit on, um, you know, before Work Matters, like where did you come to understand that your work mattered? Mm, yeah, you know, I just I thank you for asking that question because I, I love to to tell that story because I think it's in my work I see other David Roths out there every day and and uh, it's my hope that my story can can change some of the some of the journeys of some people. But um, I I when I, I graduated from the University of Arkansas went to work immediately uh, in a big company um, and just. Every three or four years, God opened new doors for me to uh, to work at new companies. I moved to San Francisco and worked for McKesson Corporation, uh, lived there for three years. I moved to Atlanta, worked for a software company, ended up being vice president of marketing for this software company, then to Washington, D.C., where I had the blessing to serve uh, on the executive team of a publicly traded software company. So the the first twenty years of my career, which I just walked you through in thirty seconds, um, is is really what I call my Sunday Christian years. I grew up in a Christian home. Uh, I knew Jesus, but uh, I my faith was completely a Sunday thing or a when do I need God thing. Mm. And you know, I feel like I was doing the right things in my work during those 20 years in terms of integrity and, you know, just the way I was doing my work. But I had no clue about the idea of integrating my faith in my work. And so it was a classic example of, of just segregating your faith and your work and work is work and faith is faith. And, and sadly, as you guys know so well, there's still millions of people who are in that mindset. Uh, still today, even with all of the work that's been happening with your organization and Work Matters and many, many other faith and work organizations. Um, in 1999, we decided um, we had our first son. Our second son was on the way, and we decided that we wanted to move back to my wife Teresa's home or to my home in Arkansas. And uh, thankfully, she was great with moving to Arkansas. And so I went, we moved back to Arkansas and I went to work for J.B. Hunt Transport, which is the largest um, over the road transportation provider in the United States. And it was at J.B. Hunt that for the first time, uh, I started thinking about what faith and work could really look like. I also, my wife and I also got really involved in our church. We were leading small groups. We were teaching classes, our faith journey, our faith was really blossoming. And so those two things were colliding. You know, our faith, our Sunday faith was really growing. And then um, all of a sudden I started um, working around people who were believers. And so I started a very stealth kind of observation of Christians. And it's one of the reasons why we're so strong at Work Matters about teaching people that faith and work all starts with your own behavior. Mm -hmm. because you have such a testimony and you're literally sharing the gospel in the way that you do your work. And so I watched these leaders and I especially like to watch them when we were on the road, when we were entertaining clients, when we were in a restaurant, maybe a bar, 
Uh, maybe a client wants to go do something afterwards that you don't really want to do. All those things. And I was just so amazed at how they remained who they were, regardless of the circumstance. If they had to hire, fire someone, if they were celebrating someone, if they had a really difficult decision, whatever it was, and they weren't perfect, obviously. But I, I saw what um, faith and work really looked like. And I saw, um, I saw that you could still be competitive in your work that you could still do your work with excellence. You could still desire to grow in your career and all kinds of things that were, I, in my book, if they're handled the right way, um, are, are absolutely right. And so that, that three or four years at J.B. Hunt, just really, I, I often say I, I got an MBA on, on faith at work by just observing other people. And then, as you guys know, our Work Matters story, but um, one Saturday morning, our church that I went to had a, uh, a, a leader cast or a leadership conference. It was simulcast. And I went to them because I, I love to grow. And at the end of this conference, unbeknownst to me, my own church launched this new ministry called Work Matters. And it was, it was just one of those moments where everything in my life came together and I was just could I was like, oh my gosh! And so I literally volunteered that day to join the original board of directors of Work Matters in its first founding. We talk about it as having two founders. The first founder was a pastor in that church. Um, it operated inside of the church for about eighteen months and took off in ways we never experienced or never expected. And so we began to talk about, hey, could this have greater impact outside of the four walls of this church? And um, so much credit goes to this church because it was a great outreach, you know, opportunity. But we spun it out of the church um, and and uh, made it a non a standalone, non denominational, nonprofit organization. So let's give a shout out to the church because they deserve credit because I love that when churches actually get what we talk about every day. What was the name of the church? Central United Methodist Church. It's actually the largest uh, Methodist church in Arkansas. And uh, the pastor's name, who was the original founder, is Tom Fraze. He's now retired, but uh, he owned an advertising agency for 20 years wow. before That's he became why. a pastor. And so That's he right. understood, right. you know, the difficulties of living your faith at work. We're talking today with David Roth from Work Matters. You can check him out online, workmatters.org, workmatters.org. David, we're going to fast forward. For many years, you guys have been sending out daily or multi-devotionals per week, stories. Uh, you've got a lot of written resources and you've been holding annual Work Matters conferences, one-day events that have brought in lots of leaders who understand connecting faith and work. It's been live in uh, Rogers, Arkansas and simulcast across the country. Where is Work Matters heading in the second half of 2021? Yeah, great question. So, um, you know, the pandemic did a lot for a lot of people. Um, we were actually working on pivoting our organization um, before the pandemic. But long story short, uh, we Work Matters uh, offers content in a variety of different ways, as you guys know. Um, one of them is our Work Matters Institute for Young Professionals. We've been doing it for 10 years but it's the one thing of all the things that we do that we haven't scaled nationally. Everything else we do is digital and is available for people to participate in regardless of where they live. The Institute is face-to-face -face and, and has been here in Northwest Arkansas. We have for the last two plus years been testing some different models of how to scale the Institute nationally. And so I'm excited really to announce to you guys um, that in this fall, we will begin offering the Work Matters Institute in three different cities in Northwest Arkansas, where we already exist, in Little Rock, Arkansas, and also in Atlanta. Mm. Um, and so the idea behind the, the Institute is, um, is to take a cohort of anywhere from 20 to 40 young leaders, and we call young leaders 25 to, to 39, pretty broad range. Um, that go through this course. It's a 12-week class. Uh, they meet once a week, whether it's in-person or digital. And um, 
And there's three elements to the Institute. The first element is the theology of work. We spend a month really teaching them. What does the Bible say about work? Let's really go into Genesis. And, and you really cover process. that in a month? Yeah, like <clears throat> that could take a whole year, but okay, a month. Yeah, and, and, and that's so beautiful because so many p- young leaders who come through the Institute already are pretty strong believers, but most of them have their worlds rocked uh, when, they, yeah. when they really hear what the Bible has to say about work. The second piece is where we get into the practical application of the theology, um, with, where we use seven executive speakers. So we, we recruit executive leaders that come in and speak on one of our seven pillars, and it makes it very practical on, okay, how do I actually live my faith at work? And then the last piece is the faith and work action plan. I'm sorry, faith and leadership action plan. So each participant creates a plan that says, um, they identify one area of brokenness in their work. Could be them, could be their culture, could be a boss, any number of things. Number two is what does that look like re- uh, renewed? Uh, what's the renewal vision? Number three is what's your action plan to go make that renewal happen? And then the fourth part of that, of that is just their own personal growth strategy. So it's beautiful. At the end of the 12 weeks, Jim and Martha, uh, they get five minutes to present to their peers a PowerPoint presentation that that lays out their faith and leadership action plan. And so that's their commissioning. As we release them after 12 weeks, uh, they go off into the workplace uh, equipped to live their faith every day, but also to attack this, this one area that needs to be renewed. Wow. You know, last time we were on location, we got a chance to interview several Institute, Work Matters Institute graduates. And I can tell you firsthand the stories that they shared and the impact it made on their work was dynamic. And um, so we're very excited to be hearing this from you and hearing how it is going to be spreading. And I just pray for those cities to really um, grasp it and to grow because, you know, we believe that this is not to, you know, God told us not to reinvent the wheel. And when something has been created, like what he helped you create in the Institute, it can perpetuate all over the country. Um, so thank you for taking that step of faith. And we're excited to see it launch. We are excited. We, we want to be there at graduation time and, and talk to some of these graduates. And, and, <laughs> and, and yeah. I know that in those three cities, but still available digitally, are you going to make it available digitally in those cities as well? So they don't have to be from Little Rock, Atlanta or, or Northwest Arkansas? It'll be a mix of both. Okay. There'll be uh, certain uh, cohorts will be all face-to-face. Some will be a mix of face-to-face and digital. And then uh, we are going to continue. One of the beautiful things we learned through, through COVID is that this 12-week course uh, uh, resonates and creates the same outcomes uh, online as it does okay. face-to-face. Right. So, uh, in fact, the class that we just graduated had 31 people in it, and um, there was about um, 10 people from Northwest Arkansas, 10 from Little Rock. And then we had other people from Cincinnati, Philadelphia, Birmingham, Alabama, Houston, Texas, Austin, Texas. Excellent. So we're going to continue to be constantly running an institute that's fully digital. So anyone anywhere across the U.S. can participate. So what's the website for the Work Matters Institute? Go to workmatters.org forward slash institute or okay. just go to workmatters.org and you'll find it right there. Uh, phenomenal. Super exciting. This gets to be launched out and, and the iWork for him. We got the scoop right here in iWork for him. You did. I, <laughs> absolutely. All right. So, David, let's just get transparent. I want I want one question. I want one tra- I was super excited about what's going on at Work Matters. I want to ask you this question as we close out the show today. If you were having a conversation with your younger you, you know, that's a great mercy me song, you know, dear younger mm-hmm. me. All right. What's one thing you'd like to tell your younger you? You know, I... <laughs> easy answer. Uh, And I I really already covered it to a degree in sharing my story, but the younger, the younger me or younger people that I get to talk to is uh, don't wait until uh, you crash and burn to figure out the beauty of integrating your faith in your work to really understand what uh, God's purpose for your work truly is so that, you know, you, you have a completely different vision of work. And I'm telling you that like when, when these young leaders come through the Institute, 
and you see in every one of them the light the light goes on this new vision for work so it's not just about the spreadsheet it's not just about you know the next promotion or what you know money or whatever and all those things can be great um but it, it's more it just gives work such a greater purpose and a greater meaning and uh, so that absolutely is you know find a mentor find a a, a person in your sphere of influence, maybe it's in your company, maybe it's not, that you see as a believer and they're trying to live that out in the workplace and let them help to teach you what that looks like or use I Work For Him or use Work Matters or any number of other resources that are out there that uh, can assist you. Excellent. Thank you for sharing that with us and, and talking to your younger you and those younger people. We all have stuff that we can gain from that. Make sure you get a chance to read chapter 28 inside I Work For Him. Get a copy at iWorkForHim forward slash bookstore. David Roth, thank you so much for being back on I Work For Him. Tell us about Work Matters Institute. Check it out online, workmatters.org forward slash institute. Thank you, David. You're welcome, Jim and Martha. It's always a blessing to see you guys. You've been listening to I Work For Him with your hosts, Jim and Martha Brangenberg. We're Christ followers. Our workplace, it's our mission field. But ultimately, I I Work work For him. Him.